that a nice scritchy scratchy? Is that a nice scritchy scratchy? Oh, this isn't done now. Good evening, everybody. How do you wave like that? Hello? <laughs> I don't know. Can you believe it's gone 9 pm? And this is the first opportunity I'm getting to speak to you or record much of anything, really. It's. It's been a day, it's been a very busy day. I'm just making myself a cup of this book of tea. It's winter warmer and it's really orangey and spicy and lovely. So I thought I'd just chat to you while my tea brews. I've got one or two bits to show you, but it will be a short vlog today, unfortunately. I've filled two big postal sacks and another shopping bag with loads and loads of orders that I need posting out tomorrow and they'll be taken first thing in the morning to the post office and they'll be wending their way to you. Hopefully if you're in the UK they'll be with you by Wednesday. Can you hear me okay? <laughs> Just chattering away. No idea whether you can actually hear what I'm saying or not. I'm making this in my new Hello Pumpkin, Hello Autumn mug which came from the um, craft centre. I think it's the Derbyshire Craft Centre at Carver but we always used to call it the Carver Craft Centre and it's sort of stuck with me. Now, when I was showing you the lovely um, Happy Halloween pumpkin decorations that I bought as part of the giveaway the other day, and I said they were the only thing I'd got, I was very remiss in saying that because in actual fact, I've got something beautifully handmade that was made by the fair hand of my own husband, Johnny. And these are something, we've got similar to these in the shop. We've got Happy Knitting Place and Happy Crochet Place. And these are both um, wall hanging plaques. That's why I was turning it round to show you that they've got a little um, hanger on the back. They aren't coasters. They aren't finished as a coaster. But he's made these two beautiful spooky ghosts. <laughs> One's a knitting ghost and the other's a ghost going, woo in the night sky. So if you win one of the prizes, you'll be in for a chance of winning one of these. I'm not going to say this is first and this is second, I don't think. I think I'll just pop one in each and then you'll get a surprise for which is which and which one you're going to get. So these are made by hand. These aren't done on um, a laser cutter or anything like that. These are done using a pyrography pen tool. Um, and he's done quite a lot of these now and they're absolutely lovely. I find the one that he made for me, the happy place, my happy place, it says, and then it's got a ball of yarn and it's really cute and they are, there are actually some of those in the shop as well which I think would make lovely gifts for the knitter or crocheter in your life but I'm not going to take those up with me I am actually going to go and do some crochet in bed now well, the most exciting things that have happened is that uh, <laughs> the scratching board that's made of cardboard that I got for Pippin arrived and he likes it a lot as you'll have seen and I painted my toenails. I've just got out of the bath <laughs> and painted my toenails with that nice Mavala colour. But I won't show you because I don't think anybody wants to see my hobbity feet, really. Well, I might just I might just give you a flash from a distance. Hang on one second. The monkey floor needs a good clean up. There you go. I think they're quite autumnal. I'm going for a swim in the morning and I don't like having bare toenails. I don't know why, that's very silly. <laughs> it's just one of my quirks. I've compiled a small pile of things to show you here. I'll show you this one first. This is the um, Consider the Raven mitts pattern by Lindsay of Simply Serving. See, Simply Serving Designs. Let me see. Let me just... Uh, I think I can show you this bit without giving away any, any information about it in general. So it's a pattern of two types. You can have a full mitten as you can see on the front page, or you can have a fingerless mitt like this. Now, Lindsay, I was watching her Vlogtober the other day, and she was talking about how she sold over a hundred, more than a hundred copies of this pattern. And it just, I'd, I just had to go and look at it on Ravelry straight away because I really, really liked it. Um, and I bought it straight away because I just thought that is the perfect Halloween project you know vlogtober project to do so i've ordered the yarn and i'm hoping that it might actually come tomorrow 
Um, so if I can just very quickly look at the pattern without giving away too much pattern materials. Yeah, so four mittens, fingerless mittens. You want 50 grams of main colour in sport weight wool and 50 of contrast colour in sport weight wool. And the yarn used was non-superwash cascade. 220 sport now i've ordered the superwash version of the cascade 220 sport because i know how <laughs> incredibly well cascade non-superwash cascade 220 felt and i don't want that to happen to these so i'm um i'm really looking forward to starting them i think as i said the yarn might arrive tomorrow so i've ordered cascade superwash 220 sport in um Gosh, I can't remember the names. I think the it's silver grey, which is a very pale grey. And then um, let me turn it so that you're looking at the pattern and get the picture again. Uh, silver grey and then a really rich dark purple. Quite a vibrant purple, actually. Um, so if that does come to... Well, as soon as it does come, I'll show you. But I've just printed that off in readiness. And I shall be looking for um, a project bag and all that jazz for that and then I did manage to sit down I mean it's been such a boring day today I didn't think about filming any of it because who wants to watch me go shopping in Morrison's and sit at a computer processing postage for <laughs> on orders for goodness knows how many hours of the day I made a tuna pasta bake for tea um which we haven't had one of for years and everybody enjoyed it apart from me so uh that was a bit sad excuse me um but you know you can't win them all and uh, at least it's something i know that everybody else enjoys so i've just got one more row of this color mini to put on and then i'm going to go on to my next orangey red row but the other thing i wanted to show you is a bit of a tale of woe so my friend davina very generously gifted me this pattern all kitted up for my birthday last year and it's um called witchy desk by una buena pizza i'm not sure <laughs> anyway that's the design and she sent me the ada the threads she even made me a beautiful project bag to keep it in and i started this in summer and was merrily stitching away on it until I realise I've made a rookie mistake and I can't quite believe I've been this stupid but because the the pattern is obviously printed on an A4 page a four A4 page it's split up into fours in, onto four pages and I without even looking at it properly made the ignorant assumption, assumption that it was split evenly across four pages if I can show you this really quickly you will see that it is in fact not evenly split at all. So two pages have like two thirds of the design on like that. Whoop. And then that's the one I'm working on. It has only a third of the design on it. So I went and folded my fabric into quarters and started on the tip of the cat's ear thinking I was starting in the middle and I've started far too far up the fabric, which I ought to have realised. I'm a total and utter drip. So I was showing this to my friend Paula the other day and saying, what do I do? Because she's a much more um, accomplished and uh, experienced cross-stitcher than I am. And she said, and she double counted for me and said, yeah, you've not got enough fabric. And I was like, right, well, I'm just going to have to start it all again. Then I <laughs> got really upset about it because especially... This piece of the shelf here at the bottom was like really heavy going to stitch. And I was really pleased with how the skull looked and everything. And she said, well, instead of just ditching it all together, just finish off the parts of the motif. So I've got part of a ghosty here, that's that ghost. And then the light on top of that candle. She said, do that and then put a border around it and make it into a smaller smaller piece you know that i can make into like a standalone cushion type thing decoration or just frame it up in a small frame and make it a thing on its own 
So I think that's exactly what I am going to do with it. Then I'll get a new piece of Ada and I'll have another bash at this and get, and get it right <laughs> on the second attempt, hopefully. So over the next few days, I'm planning to just finish off these little bits and then I might get to do a little project finish with you at some point. So anyway, that's all I've got to tell you today. Tomorrow will be much more exciting. I'm going for a swim in the morning, hopefully. Um and then into town and I'm going to go to Fred's Haberdashery and get some um, some of that sparkly black crochet thread and then in the evening I've got a special treat out with my friend um, so I won't say any more than that I'll, uh, I'll maybe tell you about it tomorrow or I might just surprise you we'll have to wait and see anyway on that note i'm going to say ta, ta for now thank you for watching oh and don't forget to go and sign up on the mailing list if you want a chance to win the little ghosty decorative plaques and the, and all the other bits and bobs that i'm collecting together for it okie dokie everybody good night and i'll see you tomorrow thanks for watching